Now we're going to take a look at how we actually measure GDP. To calculate GDP using the expenditure approach, we need to know a couple of things. First of all, we need to know what consumption expenditure is. And consumption expenditure is simply the expenditure by households on goods and services produced within the domestic country and, in fact, the rest of the world as well. However, this does not include the purchase of new homes because that is generally included as a part of investment spending. Now, investment spending is simply the expenditure on capital equipment and buildings by firms and the additions to business inventories. This also includes, as I mentioned before, the spending on new homes by households. We also have government spending, and government spending is the expenditure by all levels of government on goods and services, but this does not include transfer payments because they're not actually expenditure on goods and services. We also have net exports, and this is simply the value of exports that are exported out of the country, subtract the value of imports that are imported into the country. We also have the income approach of measuring GDP. And there's this acronym, it's called RIPSAW. Now the R stands for rent, the I stands for interest, the P stands for profits, and the W stands for wages. We also have the statistical adjustment that is essentially just the difference between the income and, and expenditure approach of calculating GDP, which we're also just going to add on there. We're also going to take away subsidies, add taxes, and add depreciation. So RIPSAW gives us the net domestic income at factor cost. Now to get from factor cost to market prices, we subtract subsidies and we add in taxes. And then we actually have the um, net domestic income at market price. And to get from net to gross, we simply add in depreciation and we have gross domestic product. Now let's differentiate nominal and real GDP. So real GDP is just the value of all final goods and services produced in a given year when valued at the prices of a reference base year. So basically it takes into account inflation, which is just the general increase in the price level. Now real GD uh, nominal GDP is the value of final goods and services that are produced in a given year when valued at the prices of that actual year. Let's learn how to calculate real GDP using the base year method. So here's an example. All we need to do is we need to multiply the new year's quantities by the base year prices. So 2007 is currently our base year, so let's take the prices and quantities of these two goods and the prices and quantities of the current year, which is 2016, and see what our real GDP is. So we take the quantity of the current year, and we take the prices of the base year, and we simply multiply them together. So when we look at bread, we have $2 pack of bread, and we're going to multiply that by 12 packs of bread that we bought in 2016. For butter, we're going to take $1 per tub of butter, we're going to multiply it by 6 tubs of butter bought, and we're going to get $6. Now all we have to do is we have to add up 24 and 6, which are the only two goods we're assuming in this economy, and we're going to get $30, and that is real GDP. Now that's the simple part of this. Now we're going to take a look at how to calculate real GDP using the chained dollar method. Now this may be a little daunting at first, but bear with me, it's actually not that difficult. Now the first step is to take the prices of adjacent years, and we're going to value the quantities in the prices of the adjacent years. It'll be a lot clearer once we go through this example. So we're going to start off by taking the prices of 2016, and we're going to multiply them by the quantities of 2016, to get the total GDP in 2015. So we have in 2015, we have 2 times 15, which is the value of bread, plus 1 times 5, which is the value of the butter. And as we can see in the graph on the lower left-hand corner, we, that gives us $35. Then we're going to take the prices of 2015, we're going to multiply them by the quantities of 2016, and we're going to get another GDP value, as you can see the calculations are all shown. Now, what we're going to also now going to do is we're going to take the prices of 2016, we're going to multiply them by the quantities of 2015, and that'll give us a GDP value of $70. Then, we're going to take the prices of 2016, we're going to multiply them by the quantities of 2016, and then we'll get a GDP value of 60. So, now that we've calculated all these numbers, what do we do next? Well, we find the average of the 2% changes from the value of GDP in 2015 prices and the value of GDP in 2016 prices. Let's continue with the example. So a percent change in GDP, 
the formula for that is simply take the GDP of the second year, subtract the GDP value of the first year, divide that by the GDP value of the first year, and then multiply that by 100. So let's do that for 2015 prices first. So we have $30 in 2016 um, valued at 2015 prices. Subtract $35, which is 2015 quantities valued in 2015 prices, divided by 35, which is, again, 2015 quantities valued at 2015 prices. And we're going to multiply that by 100. So we see that there's a decrease in GDP by 14.3%. So GDP has grown by negative 14.3%. And we're going to do the same thing for 2016 prices. The change in GDP for 2016 prices, we're lucky, is the same number, 14.3. Now to get the average, we're simply going to add these two values, and we're going to divide that by 2. And we got really lucky this time because they're the same value, so the average is, in essence, just 14, negative 14.3. Now I picked these numbers in specific because I just wanted to note that it is possible to have the real GDP or the change in real GDP be the same at values of both your uh, both prices in both years, but it is more likely that you will see them be slightly different. The percentages that you get, they might be different, but it is still possible to have them be the same. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the re the uh, GDP value of the base year, um, and then we're going to multiply that by the fractional percentage of the change in GDP. So we're going to take that 14.3, negative 14.3, we're going to divide that by 100, we're going to add 1 to it, and then we're going to multiply it by $35, and our change in real GDP, sorry, our real GDP for 2016 is $30. Now again, I'm just going to reiterate this. We see that the value of GDP in 2015 prices for 2016 is also $30, but in this case, this is a coincidence. This You're not always going to see this. In fact, you'll rarely see this. 